Students, uh, welcome to this tutorial in After Effects, where today we're going to create some 3D text layer that is animated or moves. So uh, I have uh, After Effects open. I'm going to say open project. No, new project, because this is new. So I'll click on new project. Uh, it takes me into the interface. Uh, it has new composition and it has new composition from footage. We're not bringing in any footage for this. We're going to create a composition on its own. So I could go up to composition and say new, or I can just click on this. Either way, I, I'm creating a new composition. This opens this tab and I'm going to name this Cinema 4D. C I N E M A Cinema 4 D. And my computer helped me with that. And I've named it that for a reason um, because I wanted it to remind me that I need to change the 3D renderer to Cinema 4D. Uh, I'll tell you that in a minute. I just want to check these presets. Uh, the preset is on HDTV, 1080 by 29.97, which is our frame rate. Here's the width and the height, full high definition. Square pixels, yes. Frame rate, as I said, it's almost 30 frames, 29.97. Resolution, full. Uh, my background color is black. That's fine. I can, I'm going to add a color, so it's fine that it's black right now. Before I hit OK, I want you to go up to uh, where it says 3D Render. And down here, it has Render Classic 3D. And I want you to click that little lever to the right of that and change this to Cinema 4D. You'll see it tells me that what I can do using Cinema 4D, and it shows me what's disabled. Uh, things like motion blur, light transmission, I'm going to accept that those uh, modes or filters or effects are not going to work and I'm going to hit OK. The spinning wheel of death. And you see I have a new composition. Uh, my timeline opens. There's nothing in it yet. My project panel shows a new composition named Cinema 4D. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to create some layers down here. I'm going to go up to the layer in the menu, in the full menu, After Effects, File, Edit, Composition, Layer. I click on that and I go to New. And you see it opens this box with text, solid, light, camera, null, object, so on. Uh, we're going to be using that today. Uh, we're going to add some text, we're going to add some light, and but first I'm just going to add a solid color. And I click on this and it opens this up and it has a name, solid color or purple solid. That's because I have purple down in here. Uh, I can double click on that and it opens my color picker. I can choose any color I want. I can just move up and down this color band, which is kind of like uh, our color wheel. And I'm going to choose, I think I'm going to stay with what I had pretty much. Sort of a magenta. If I click out here, it actually named it for me. So I don't have to name it unless you want to change it to something else. Uh, I'm going to hit OK there. And I'm going to hit OK here. And my first layer is created. And I have a color over my composition. So I have my composition I made. I added, created a layer that goes over the top of it. Um, just to the left of the square here, as a little lever. I want you to get used to clicking these open and looking in there. Um, some of them will have more options than others. This one has transform. I can transform this color layer. Now, why would I want to do that? Well, um, maybe I'd want to change that uh, scale of it, right? So I can go to scale 
and I'm just clicking on left clicking and I can drag this to the left and change that scale and you'll see as it goes out it even goes out further um, I want to show you that now because when I add the light later the light may not be big enough uh, to cover my text and I won't see my text uh, I just wanted to show you how you can transform things um, I can also change the opacity of this I can take it down to where it's not full 100% makes it a little transparent I can change the rotation of this and move it around uh, those are all under that layer transform okay I'm gonna close that back up and I'm going to add another layer I'm going to create a text layer uh, so I go up to the same place on the menu that I was before to layer hit new and I'm going to hit text and it created a new layer and you probably can't see it but there's a little line for my cursor in there and it moved me from my uh, selection or move tool it moved me into my horizontal type tool it also opened all this information over here on the right which actually has a character it opened the character for my text and my fonts uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just type in with all caps cinema 4d and I can double click on it and it didn't highlight the 4d part right if I drag my cursor over it it doesn't want to get all of it either here's how you can fix that let's say I double clicked on cinema I can hold down my shift key and double click on the 4d right uh, so I have it all selected I'm gonna change the color of my text and if I look over here I'm under the character uh, I have my color picker right here I'm gonna double click on this open up my color picker and I'm going to choose I think I'm just going to choose some black and hit OK I also want to go to align uh, I don't see a line here oh here it is if you don't see a line you can come up to your window up here in the menu bar and just go to a line and click on it till you get that check mark so if it doesn't appear over here and you're saying um, I don't see it it's because it's not checked in my window um, on a line I have uh, a line left a line, a line horizontally a line right a line to the top vertically and a line to the bottom I'm gonna choose to align it horizontally and I'm also gonna choose to align it vertically okay I'm going to go back to my character and I can increase or decrease the size of my font just by left clicking on that where it says pixels or points uh, next to the small T and the big T and that allows me to resize this I can make it much bigger or smaller if I change the size I need to go back to a line and realign it because I increase the size it kind of throws it off I'm gonna go back to character I can choose a different font um, I could choose something like that uh, for today's for the sake of today um, I want a font that has um, um, some thickness to it so I can actually see it when I when I create that 3d effect to it so the thicker it is the more I'm gonna actually have that effect not that you can't do it with a thinner font you can uh, I'm just choosing this all right uh, I changed the color I centered it I changed the font or showed you how to change that um, okay I'm gonna go and create another layer um, I'm going to go to um, D 
down to my layer. I'm down here. Uh, and I, if I click on the color layer, it highlights it. If I click on the Cinema 4D, it highlights that layer. I'm going to right click on the Cinema 4D layer. So I have my cursor on it. I right click and I'm going to go up to where it says 3D layer. And it created a 3D effect. Um, I'm going to open this one just the way I did the other one when I showed you the how to transform it. I'm going to do that on this one. And if I open that up, it has the text. Um, it has transform. It has this thing called geometry options. And why does it have that? It's because I created a 3D layer. And because I changed it in the beginning to Cinema 4D, I also have this extrusion depth, which allows me to add some depth going back behind this letter. So I'm going to change this. If I highlight with my cursor, just drag my mouse over to those letters, I get the hand. And I can left click and move this to the right or to the left. I'm going to go to the right until I have about 125, somewhere in that area. Yeah. I can also just double click on it and I can type it in as well. All right. So. I'm going to close that back up. I increase that extrusion depth, which gives some depth to my letter. I'm going to close this back up. Um, but I can't really see it. And why is that? I can't see it because I don't have a light shining on it. And I'm going to add one. So that's going to be my next layer. I go up to layer. I say new. And this time I'm going to choose light. And this tab opens. And it's named appropriately Spotlight because that's what I want. Under here it says Light Type. Uh, it has Parallel, Spot, Point, and Ambient. I want the Spotlight on my text. Um, the intensity is 100. The one thing I really want to make sure is have this Cast Shadow checked. If you don't have it checked, please click on that. I'm going to hit OK. You'll see it has a circumference line going around it now. And that's actually my light. Um, I'm going to show you how to move that around. Uh, sometimes when you um, add the light, um, it'll change. You'll start to see the 3D effect already. See, I can see a little bit of it on the right and left side. Let me show you how I can move that light around. So I have the hot, the spotlight one highlighted. I'm going to click on that and open this up and go to transform and open that up. I'm going to go to position and it has three sets of numbers. One is for the X and the Y and the third one's just the uh, scale. If I move the first number and I'm left clicking and move back, you'll see I'm moving on the Y axis, right? I can move the spotlight back and forth on that axis. If I go to the second one, uh, it moves that spotlight on the X axis up and down, right? And the third set of numbers actually just increases the scale or decreases the cast of that light. So, uh, I just wanted to show you that for some, if you need to, sometimes when we add um, a backdrop, we'll lose the text, we won't see it, and it's because the size of the light sometimes. So, I'm going to leave it pretty much where I found it, which was right there, I'm pretty centered, and my circumference is almost within my composition. I'm going to close this back up. All right, and I'm going to create a backdrop on this light. And you'll see what I mean. Uh, in order to do that, I'm going to go to my color layer. Click on it, and then I'm going to right click. And I'm going to say 3D layer for that as well. 
Sometimes you'll lose the text. Uh, I can barely see mine because uh, my spotlight circumference is kind of small. Um, but if you lost it completely, um, I can show you how to find that. Uh, I'm going to open this up. And I'm going to go to transform. And I'm going to go to scale. And you can see that I can move that scale around. And it might, if I make it wide enough, so it goes outside the composition, you should get your text back if you can't see it. Um, okay. All right, I'm going to close that up. I'm actually going to go back to the spotlight for a minute and open that one up because I'm going to make my spotlight just like I showed you. I can change it. I'm going to change the circumference and make it a little bit bigger so I can see more of my text. I'm pulling it to the left. I just put my cursor right over that third set of numbers and I left clicked and I pulled it to the left. Okay. Um, I'm going to close that back up. And I can also add some animation to this. So I can actually make it so where I can see. Uh, I'm going to increase the extrusion on that for one minute. I'm going to go back to my actual text layer and go to geometry options and I'm going to increase that depth on that a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So I keep adding uh, layers and I'm changing them to 3D to get the full effect, especially on the spotlight. I need that as well. Um, and it's looking pretty good. Okay, I'm now going to add an effect to this, some animation. So I'm going to go to the character layer. And I'm going to open that up. And I'm going to go to the Y or X rotation of this. I'm opening transform. Um, you see if I move my cursor on say the X one, it'll show me that it's going to erase it or flip it upside down. So uh, I'm going to add some keyframes and actually change that. Zero. So with my time indicator or big blue, I'm going to make sure it's on zero. I'm going to go to the X rotation. And I'm going to click on the stopwatch. As soon as I click on the stopwatch, it shows me uh, another keyframe option over here where I can add more. And it also added a keyframe right here. I'm going to drag big blue out about ooh, 10 seconds. And I'm going to add another keyframe by clicking on that. And I'm going to change this zero to three. I'm just going to click on it and type in three. I'm going to meet, move my time indicator back to zero. And now I'm going to hit my space bar and let it begin render. And you'll see uh, that it begins that rotation. Because I have black for my text, you know, you don't see the spotlight as much as you would if you had a different color. I guess I could go back and change the color on that. And maybe I'll do that in a second. I'm going to let this render out. You see um, the green coming in to my timeline as it works its way across and it's working its way to the other keyframe that I put out at 10 seconds. Once it gets there, um, I'll have the full animation. Okay, now if I move 
time indicator back and press my space bar again, you'll see I get that animation. Okay, I'm going to go back and change that color of my text just to show it to you. I'm going to close this up for a second. I'm going to go to my um, this layer. I'm going to choose my text tool and double click on the cinema and then hold down my shift key and double click on the 4D. And I'm going to come back over here to my foreground color and click on that. And I'm going to choose something like something will stand out a little bit more, maybe like a, a bright yellow and hit OK. And click on my move tool and then I'm going to come back and move my time indicator back to zero and then press my spacebar. And it had to re-render so it's rendering again and you'll see the green is climbing along as we go uh, because I added, I changed it. Every time I change it, it's going to re-render itself. Since I changed the color so you could see it more, uh, it had that effect. My machine is working hard because it's making noises now. And it's just about done. And here we go. I'm going to move big blue back to zero, hit my space bar, and there's my effect. Um, okay, that's it. Animating titles in After Effects. I want to render this out. I go up to Composition. I say Pre-Render. Uh, I look down here where it says Output Module. I want to make sure I click on that. And I want it to be a quick time movie. Okay. Um, if your computer doesn't support quick time, you could uh, choose another option. Um, one that I would say would just be maybe an MP3. <clears throat> no, not an MP3. I'm sorry. Um, a, a, uh, Photoshop sequence. Uh, most of you should have QuickTime supported on whether you're on a Mac or a window. And, and I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to go to the output 2. I'm going to double click on where it says Cinema 4D Movie. And it opens this up and tells me, gives me the option to decide where it's going. I'm putting it in my After Effects folder. It's named Cinema 4D Movie. I'm going to hit Save. And I'm going to come over here and click on Render. It starts its render. Uh, and you can watch it as it's building. When it's done, we get a little ding. And I know I'm done. And that's it.